Okay, so now as we go into the 2.3.2 shape specific properties, uh, we're actually going to be talking a little bit more about some of the information that is very specific to to certain things like uh, like when we talk about label, like the fonts, specific fonts. Uh, as we discussed initially, like uh, especially with label, the only two uh, fonts that we actually currently have in this graphics package is Arial and Courier, uh, like uh, having italic uh, basically being a Boolean, uh, either it's true or false, things like that. So, so there's s some specific stuff uh, that that that's related to to certain things. Like w when it comes to circle, only the circle has radius uh, because uh, because the oval remember has two different diameters where the circle actually has a radius because the two different diameters are the same diameter so you can actually just use radius as, as, as a specific tool for radius uh, so uh, as you notice in this right here uh, when we actually click the mouse um, we're, we're preset to where we have a radius of 50 but every time we click the mouse we're going to add 20 to that radius uh, so it basically makes the circle bigger uh, as, as we're actually clicking there uh, and then uh, and then when it comes to a, a few of the other things like uh, uh, like I said circle has a very specific thing of radius uh, regular polygons now regular polygons do also have a radius because your regular polygons are actually based off a circle itself uh, where we're talking about uh, a circumscribed shape uh, basically uh, when we actually have uh, any any of these uh, regular polygons that are actually built into a circle because they have a radius that actually goes to the points of of the figure itself uh, so like you can actually look at this and you see that there would actually be a circle around this a circle around this a circle around this and the radius of that circle uh, that actually uh, circumscribes the, the regular polygon goes from the center to these points basically right here and and the fact that this this value of points can actually be changed is basically the number of points that actually touch uh, the, the the circumscribed circle uh, to to actually create those regular polygons right uh, so as we go through a little bit more information uh, another specific property is the the roundness that goes to the star property and uh, and we might have talked about it a little bit before uh, I think uh, Mr. Derek was the one that that went through this information uh, but or it might have been Mr. Dan uh, but um, the roundness is is what actually kind of adjusts the peaks and valleys of your star itself so so something that has a roundness of zero literally is like a, a an extremely pointed star whereas uh, anything that has a roundness of a hundred because it's based on kind of like a percentage so if it has a roundness of a hundred uh, your your valleys and your peaks of your star points basically are all on that circle so it it literally it like uh, if you create a star with a roundness of a hundred uh, then you are basically making a regular polygon that is double the number of the star's points. So, like if we if we put the points of the star at seven, uh, we put its roundness at a hundred, it would literally be a regular polygon that had fourteen sides, if that makes sense. So, so let's look at the first checkpoint right here. Uh, actually, let me reset this. So our first checkpoint, uh, checkpoint one, if you look at it, uh, what happens when we put our roundness to zero on a star itself? Uh, so if we put our roundness to zero, like I said, it's gonna make it extremely spiky, almost like it's it's literally made out of a line. So that 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 uh, command, the star is spiky, it is, it is made out of lines, boom, submit. And then the next question is, in the previous example, if we click enough time, what happens and why does it crash, right? Uh, so if we go back to this star one and we start out and we start clicking, okay? We're clicking and clicking and clicking and then it errors out. So 
uh, like I was saying, the roundness itself has to be like evaluated in the range of zero to 100 because it's like a percentage roundness, right? Uh, it even says right here, roundness should be number in range zero to 100, but 110 is not, is, is out of its, uh, basically its range. So the star's roundness gets larger than 100. That's our answer. Let's submit. We're good to go. Uh, so uh, a few specific line properties uh, are that line width and dashes. Uh, much like border, uh, we also have the those the specific values of dashes with our border too. Uh, uh, that 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 property is 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 very specific to that. Uh, we also have uh, a few specific ones when it comes to labels, right? Uh, with label, uh, we can actually change the properties of boldness, uh, our bold. Uh, we can change <coughs> the font property. We can change the size property. We can change uh, its, uh, its uh, italic. Uh, so if we actually look at this and run this code, uh, starting out, uh, we have an italic zero because it's set as an italic zero. Uh, and then as we start clicking, it's starting to get uh, larger. Uh, and and the value, obviously, is uh, basically that number that, that's existing as, as we click and click and click. Right? So it keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, we can pretty much just keep on blowing it up okay so let's go here to this checkpoint and then it asks in the previous example when is the label italic well if we kind of think about it uh, it did start out italic so when we were at zero it was italic and then we started clicking and it kept on going up and up but every time we click it's going to maintain the italic is false so uh, it's only when the value is zero uh, because after that, it's going to stay uh, bold Arial the whole time. Okay, so now we have this uh, thing called app. Uh, and this is one of these presets that's actually been placed into uh, the CMU uh, CS Academy as, as kind of a, a specific preset uh, that, that's there. But... Uh, the app does have a property to it that's the background and and let's for for all intents and purposes because I haven't actually read on further into to kind of find out more about what app actually is uh, but but app itself uh, app dot background is basically the color of our full canvas uh, so we can actually change that color uh, with any presets or like an RGB value uh, or um, uh, even a gradient like we can actually put a gradient in there and and actually uh, set our specific starting point for a gradient so we can we can basically do anything uh, that we do and fill with our app dot background uh, so we can actually go through and and do whatever with the background so like looking at this you see that the background is that light green color because it's it's automatically set with light green uh, and then looking here uh, it starts out light green we click it and it actually turns it to cyan okay so now uh, even if you like is the app a shape the short answer you can actually look and it says the app is not a shape uh, but you're actually going to learn more about app in future in future lessons but just for all intents and purposes right now uh, we're going to think of app dot background as a way to change our our canvas color okay so uh, looking at this checkpoint in the previous example uh, try some different backgrounds then answer the question uh, and to find out what are, are the following legal backgrounds well I already said uh, we can put any preset color that's in there so color names like cyan and purple yep that's good we can also set up our RGB values uh, so we can literally use all of the colors in the true color spectrum uh, so we can we can put anything from 0 to 200 and and uh, 55 in all these spots uh, so literally um, uh, we can actually do pretty much any any value of true color like I said 
uh, and then we can also do a gradient so so like we could go in and put a gradient uh, transitioning from any of these colors uh, and then it, using our alignments to actually uh, set up the starting points as well so we can do gradients we can do the color names we can do the RGB values with so all of these submit that and now we're good to go with checkpoint four uh, that actually unlocks uh, everything there so just know uh, that I've set up all these exercises. Uh, I know it says zero out of three, but it's actually set uh, to where all you need is just two points. Uh, so basically you could come in here and do talking and do camera, and then you'd be good in those exercises, or you can actually go in and do the interim by itself and you would be good. So. Uh, the point of this is just make sure that you get two points in, in section uh, 2.3.3 as well as get two points in, in section 2.3.4 uh, and you should be good to go. And in hopes uh, everybody can kind of catch up so we can get ready for uh, doing our creative tasks on, on Friday uh, with Mr. Dan. Uh, so hopefully uh, this helps out. Once again, I do apologize. Uh, for not being available to to physically be in class uh, but we do have the remind code so uh, if 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 you if you get a wild hair and you kind of think about stuff last minute uh, you can always uh, do send me a message on remind uh, and I will get back to you at my nearest convenience to help you out uh, but uh, as always uh, I hope this is beneficial to you I hope you guys are enjoying this class uh, and I will see you uh, as soon as I am available and not physically <laughs> in another high school building at the time. Uh, but have a great day, everybody, and I will see you soon.